Good afternoon and welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Michael Danielson. I am a media literacy teacher in Seattle, Washington. I teach at Seattle Prep, a Jesuit high school. And 25 years ago, I was at a youth ministry convention in Houston. And it was the last night, and I was going into the banquet hall, and I was looking for a seat to, to sit down and eat dinner. And most people had already sat down in the back. There was a couple tables that were open. And I walked up to a woman, and I saw her name tag said, Center for Media and Values. And I said, oh, hi. What's the Center for Media and Values? And she goes, well, we're just about to sit down and eat dinner. Um, have a seat, and I'll tell you about it. <laughs> and that was Sister Elizabeth Tillman that I sat down with. And for the next hour, I have no idea what the keynote speaker said at the dinner <laughs> that night. But the key conversation was with her, and her passion, and her drive, and her creativity, and my life was changed forever. And I'm sure many of you have stories similar to that. And uh, I am really excited. There's a full circle moment. <clears throat> In spite of her passing, um, we have so much to celebrate. And Washington State, I am proud to say, just became the first state in the country to require media literacy for all public schools K through 12. And really, it was um, her, her vision that inspired me and Marilyn Cohen, who's uh, part of the Alliance for Media Education in, in Seattle, and that team that I worked with really for the last five years, uh, well, 20 years we've been working. But five years, we came up with this idea with, shouldn't we be doing this? Like, Canada and Australia and all these other countries figured this out a long time ago. Maybe we could try it too. And then two years ago, we found a sponsor, a senator um, in the state legislature, and the, uh, the uh, governor signed it last spring. So we have lots to celebrate, and many other states are moving in the direction too. So um, that's the beginning of my story, and uh, or the beginning and the latest of my story. So on behalf of the Center for Media Literacy and the Pauline Center for Media Studies and Tessler and Sister Rose and myself are so happy that you're here today and we're very excited to hear your stories and to celebrate this amazing life. Joanna Rickle and Sister Lynn uh, Mussel, <laughs> Mussel will be our first speakers and thank you so much for traveling all the way to Iowa. I came from Iowa and Lynn from Montana. <clears throat> well, it's uh, certainly a joy to be among so many friends of Sister Elizabeth Thoman. Like some of you, perhaps, the Sisters of the Humility of Mary are still trying to grasp the reality of Liz's physical absence among us. But we are aware of her spirit in what scripture calls the cloud of witnesses, and many Catholics refer to as the communion of saints. So we believe that after our earthly existence, we continue the relationships with our loved ones in a new way. Sometimes we are reminded of the person, and at other times we experience the person's presence and support in a different way. I feel very confident that Liz is very present here today, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to join this circle of friends in remembrance and celebration of her life and works. Now, all of us who knew Liz probably have our own examples of proof that she was a woman of vision and determination to bring about that vision to fruition. At the vigil service that our community had uh, at the time of Liz's funeral, her sister, Patty, shared with us that Liz was very much a Tolman, but there was something different about her. Patty said that Liz had a vision that the family could not help her realize, and she said that's what Liz found in our community, her second family. Basically, the space and support to continue uh, following that vision, increasing the passion for it, 
and finding the ways to live out that vision. Well, Patty's observation was news to me and perhaps many of our community, but after a time of reflection, it really resonated to me as, as being quite true. I can see the validity of it. And that's where I think all of you enter into the picture as well, because you too offered support and space, challenge and creativity, commitment and correctives to help Liz become who she was meant to be and to help her do what she was called to do, not only by the needs of society, but also by the God who loved her and called her to a particular vocation and mission. I'm so grateful that Renee Hobbs was with Liz during the week that she was in the hospital shortly before her death. And many of you provided support, prayers, cards, offers of encouragement. Two of her brothers drove from Tennessee and spent some days with her until the morning of her death. That evening, several of our sisters were with Liz and prayed the rosary together. About five minutes later, Liz danced over the edge of the world and crossed over into her forever home. So thanks to all of you for walking with Liz and sharing that wonderful journey. I just wanted to share a bit about how grateful I am to have had the opportunity uh, to work with Liz on the membership development team, which had to do with uh, developing new programs and documents related to potentially welcoming new members into our community. And um, I was able to experience her uh, passion and creativity around that and was so grateful um, for that. And uh, just a couple of experiences within that. Um, before she had moved back to Iowa, um, I was able to come out here to Los Angeles and uh, we made a, a video where um, in the video I explained a little bit about the process of becoming a sister. And she was just so um, encouraging throughout that process. Um, and you know, we rehearsed and um, went over that. And um, so I, I just have a wonderful um, memory of that and how she mentored me through that. And then um, when we work together uh, on the team and um, you know, we're creating you know, documents and programs and things, um, she would call, call me up sometimes and you know, just want to um, go over things. And um, it, you know, sometimes I would be you know, kind of tired. It had been a long day. And I would have a message you know, to give her a call and to go over something. Um, but yet, um, you know, she just had such passion and energy. And so um, when, when I did give her a call, there was something about it where um, it was still just a, a real pleasure to do that with her. And, and somehow that, that energy was just infectious. And um, I, I was just so, so blessed and enriched to, to know her as we all were. Thank you. Thank you.